So, as they used to say, any schoolboy knows, protons, neutrons, electrons make up atoms. Now, which is the biggest? I've been in some pretty elite high schools. Proton bigger than a neutron? Half the class will say yes. Remember our quark theory. Protons are what was most abundant in the universe. So we started with the proton. In order to make a neutron in the sun, which is bigger, we had to make the equivalent mass of an electron, which is tiny. Let's throw that in there. Now, for chemistry, making elements, you can look in any book. I'll show you the proton in the nucleus. If there's any neutrons after hydrogen, which there has to be, you'll see neutrons in the nucleus. That's all the stuff in the middle, okay? Well, what I'm going to show for chemistry, the electrons, the teeny weeny little baby electrons on the outside. That's what's most important for elements and atoms to bond together. You need the electrons. Electricity, magnetism, I said were the same thing. Again, Electrons are what hold it together. So a typical diagram of what it would look like is you'd have a proton and a proton and a proton. So the number of protons is going to tell you what element it is. Now we can't have two protons together. That's why I said the neutrons are so important. You need neutrons whether you're building bigger atoms or starting at the beginning. So we'll throw a bunch of neutrons. I'll draw them bigger here so you remember the neutron is bigger. Okay, so there's magic numbers usually where the number of protons equals the number of neutrons. Oxygen is one of those situations. Eight protons, eight neutrons. Oxygen has a mass of 16, you'll hear. Now, take for example one proton, one neutron. That would be deuterium. It's called a heavy hydrogen. Okay. Well, one proton, one neutron. Two protons, two neutrons was helium. This is what the sun is making, remember? You can also have two protons, one neutron. That's a helium three. So four, five, six protons. This is carbon. You're going to hear carbon is the most life essential element in the world. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, those three together. Then you'll start adding a good little buzzword of schnapps, C-H-N-O-P-S, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. If you got those down, I don't even consider hydrogen because it's just a little proton that we start with, so they always kind of fill the gap like little magnets. So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, they're the three right in a row on a periodic table. So learning how elements are made in stars is a very important thing right there. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. So this is what you would see as the nucleus, okay? I try and keep color coded. So carbon is usually always black because anything that burns was usually a residue of carbon. So if this is a carbon atom, It's called carbon-12, which means it has six protons and usually most likely six neutrons. Now there's carbon-13, there's other carbons, but when stars are making them, carbon-12. point is, I want you to see now, electrons are what our chemistry is going to be based on. So we've got this carbon nucleus here. They get these outer shells of electrons. So there's going to be one electron here, one here. 
in that first shell. This is what the helium atom looked like. But now for carbon, see with the six protons, six pluses, it's going to need six negatives to balance it out. So what happens is with two electrons in that first shell, now you've got this outer shell where you're going to have one, two, three, four. Total of six electrons. So this is a balanced neutral carbon atom, as they call it, okay? But chemistry is the bonding. So what's going to happen is for each of these electrons out here, since they're so far away from the nucleus, they need to be balanced electromagnetically. The protons, hydrogen, comes in there. So what we're going to get out here is a hydrogen now is a proton with its electron. So you've got a proton, and it's going to actually bond by this pair of electrons here. I'll show you how that is in a moment again. So up here you got a P plus and an electron, P plus electron, P plus electron. What this is the equivalent of is C, protons or hydrogens, CH, and there's four of them. This is what I call a space dust molecule, CH4, methane, very common on Earth also. I say I teach filling in the blanks, okay? We've all played with magnets, north poles, push apart, north-south go together, right? Well, here, when you study chemistry, you'll see it in the book, and they just tell you to memorize it. Okay, you've got six pluses in the nucleus of the carbon atom here. Then you bring along a hydrogen. That's got a plus. So these pluses would be repelling each other. The electrons would actually be neutralizing the pluses. So you reach this equilibrium distance, as they call it, a bond length. But look at this, electron, electron. Shouldn't they be repelling each other? They shouldn't even be going near each other. But that is what bonds that hydrogen to the carbon, as they call it. Electron, electron. Now this is a more in-depth concept of how two negatives can actually hold this together. That's where that quantum quantity of spin comes in. There's one electron will have an up spin, the other electron will have a down spin. And again, it's not really a spin as they say, but that's what holds it together. So if two electrons have up spins, they're not gonna bond that hydrogen together. So now there's a whole field called quantum chemistry where they take quantum considerations like this in. So from independent study, I have determined that this is called Cooper pairs. Whenever you get electrons together, Cooper pairs. Cooper won two Nobel Prizes in physics. One was for the electron pair. So let me erase this here now. So again, to show how the molecules form, A good example I like to show is the space shuttle, okay? You've got this orange tank up there. You have two solid fuel boosters on each side. But inside the orange tank on the shuttle, you've got a bigger compartment, twice as big as the other. There's two main compartments. There's two fuels. You have oxygen, liquid oxygen, they say L-O-X. Liquid hydrogen, L-H-2. These are the two fuels in the space shuttle. So when they scrub a mission, They've already filled these 580,000 gallons or whatever of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in there. They have to take it out. 
and usually it goes to waste. So scrubbing a mission or delaying it is big business here. Now, I love to ask, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, which is in the bigger one? And people just guess. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Three main engines out of the tail end of the space shuttle, all that comes out of there is water. H2O. Okay, look at the two. Two for the H. There's twice as much hydrogen as there is oxygen. So, this LH2. The smaller compartment up here, liquid oxygen, locks. Now, if you study science, you learn physics, mathematics. Smaller compartment, oxygen weighs 16 times as much as the hydrogen. Why not have the oxygen closer to the ground so you don't need to pump it up as high? It takes more energy to pump the liquid oxygen up higher onto the shuttle than the liquid heat hydrogen? Well, the answer is gravity will also make the oxygen go down when you want it to react. So, I love to get beginners on this because they just guess and act like they know and they don't. So, what I'm going to show you here, this is another thing I developed for fourth graders. Water, simplest molecule, but it's still got the greatest heat capacity of any common substance. So this still releases the most energy for the reaction going together. So we already know there's twice as much hydrogen. So if you took H2 plus O2, this would go on to make H2O plus energy because it releases heat energy that's what lifts the rocket up now I'm going to show you how a research biochemist draws a water molecule no he doesn't go to the well to draw water to balance this equation here see twice as much hydrogen you end up with two water molecules so we're going to draw two water molecules. Let me erase some of this here. We don't need this anymore. In fact, I'll take that balanced equation away also for you. This is stuff they try and teach in high school. Pre-med students couldn't get it. The concept of pH is based on this. If you draw it this way, water, H2O, two oxygens, okay? O, O. The real chemistry comes into this. I'll do this even though I know most of you are beginners out there in TV interland. Atomic number is eight. There's eight protons in the oxygen. Now, the electrons, we don't even need to consider the neutrons. This is the theory I call it, the ABC, this is it, technique to chemistry. Neutrons don't even care about them. Other than hydrogen having one proton, what we need to do is count electrons, okay? Now remember I drew the electrons were in this little shell before, okay? Well, we'll put the two that were in that first shell, like in the methane, we'll put those two electrons in there. Now, the magic number is eight. We need to get eight electrons in the last outer shell to make this a stable molecule. Now remember, there's two hydrogens, right? So we've got one plus and another plus. So we'll put a plus there, plus there. Now just like in the methane before, the one electron from the hydrogen bonded with one of the electrons from the carbon. Well, here in this case, it bonds with one of the electrons in the oxygen. So this, again, is called a bonding pair of electrons here. Another one here. 